Earlier in this section, I told you that decision trees are the easiest to understand. And that's why we started machine learning with decision trees. In this section, we're going to export our model in a visual format. So you will see how this model makes predictions. That is really, really cool. Let me show you. So once again, I've simplified this code. So we simply import our data set, create input and output sets, create a model and train it. That's all we are doing. Now, I want you to follow along with me, type everything exactly as I show you in this lecture. Don't worry about what everything means. We're going to come back to it shortly. So on the top, from sklearn import tree. This object has a method for exporting our decision tree in a graphical format. So after we train our model, let's call tree.export underline graph viz. Now here are a few arguments we need to pass. The first argument is our model. The second is the name of the output file. So here we're going to use keyword arguments because this method takes so many parameters and we want to selectively pass keyword arguments without worrying about their order. So the parameter we're going to set is out underline file. Let's set this to music dash recommender dot dot. This is the dot format, which is a graph description language. You'll see that shortly. Now the other parameter we want to set is feature underline names. We set this to an array of two strings, age and gender. These are the features or the columns of our data set. So they are the properties or features of our data. Okay. The other parameter is class names. So class underline names. We should set this to the list of classes or labels we have in our output data set, like hip hop, jazz, classical, and so on. So this Y data set includes all the genres or all the classes of our data, but they're repeated a few times in this data set. So here we call y.unique. This returns the unique list of classes. Now we should sort this alphabetically. So we call the sorted function and pass the result a y.unique. The next parameter is label. We set this to a string all. Once again, don't worry about the details of these parameters. We're going to come back to this shortly. So set label to all, then rounded to true, and finally filled to true. So this is the end result. Now let's run this cell using control and enter. Okay. Here we have a new file, music recommender dot dot. That's a little bit funny. So we want to open this file with VS Code. So drag and drop this into a VS Code window. Okay, here's the dot format. It's a textual language for describing graphs. Now to visualize this graph, we need to install an extension in VS Code. So on the left side, click the extensions panel and search for dot, D-O-T. Look at this second extension here, graph viz or dot language by Stefan VS. Go ahead and install this extension and then reload VS Code. Once you do that, you can visualize this dot file. So let me close this tab. All right. Look at this dot, dot, dot here on the right side. Click this. You should have a new menu. Open preview to the site. So click that. All right. Here's the visualization of our decision tree. Let's close the dot file. There you go. This is exactly how our model makes predictions. So we have this binary tree, which means every node can have a maximum of two children. On top of each node, we have a condition. If this condition is true, we go to the child node on the left side. Otherwise, we go to the child node on the right side. So let's see what's happening here. The first condition is age less than or equal to 30.5. If this condition is false, that means that user is 30 years or older. So the genre of the music that they're interested in is classical. So here we're classifying people based on their profile. That is the reason we have the word class here. So a user who is 30 years or older belongs to the class of classical or people who like classical music. Now, what if this condition is true? That means that user is younger than 30. So now we check the gender. If it's less than 0 0.5, 
which basically means if it equals to zero, then we're dealing with a female. So we go to the child node here. Now, once again, we have another condition. So we're dealing with a female who is younger than 30. Once again, we need to check their age. So is the age less than 25.5? If that's the case, then that user likes dance music. Otherwise, they like acoustic music. So this is the decision tree that our model uses to make predictions. Now, if you're wondering why we have these floating point numbers, like 25.5, these are basically the rules that our model generates based on the patterns that it finds in our data set. As we give our model more data, these rules will change. So they're not always the same. Also, the more columns or more features we have, our decision tree is going to get more complex. Currently, we have only two features, age and gender. Now back to our code, let me quickly explain the meaning of all these parameters. We set filled to true, so each box or each node is filled with a color. We set rounded to true, so they have rounded corners. We set labeled to all, so every node has labels that we can read. We set class names to the unique list of genres, and that's for displaying the class for each node right here. And we set feature names to age and gender, so we can see the rules in our nodes.